morning, everybody. Welcome to the Trading Market Technicals Morning Call video for Tuesday, November 27th. Markets uh, had a down day yesterday, uh, but believe it or not, very, very quiet. If you're not in front of the screens all day, markets really did not much of anything. Uh, we did gap lower, a uh, small gap lower, and then uh, markets kind of paid some of its losses, pushing up towards the end of the day and into the close, which is a little bit of a bullish sign. A lot of the shorts weren't working yesterday, um, so if you were short trying to, trying to get short at the opening, uh, markets really didn't do any follow-through at all. Uh, let me run down the numbers. Dow down 42. They were down as much as 60-something uh, points. NASDAQ up up 9, and that's because of Apple. Apple had a great day, um, as well as Facebook. Gold was up uh, marginally, up $1.68. And um, the U.S. dollar was down fractionally, uh, 0 .08. Uh, so really not much going on. Digesting the, the big move from Wednesday and Friday, and um, which is, again, a bullish sign. Uh, where do we go from here? And I keep I always like to ask, answer that question. Well, uh, we have a little bit of conflicting um, what our indicators are saying. In the, in the scheme of things, in the bigger scheme of things, I think the market does rally into the new year. Um, however, I do think that the markets may be in for a little bit of a pullback, and I'll get into um, the charts and the indicators as well. But um, I do see... Uh, the market's looking for a pullback. Not, really, nothing goes straight up or straight down. We did have a big five-day move um, on virtually no volume, like I indicated yesterday. So I'm looking for, I'm still looking for that pullback. I'm looking for, um, whether it be a, a shallow pullback, but I'm looking for some sort of a pullback so we can buy into stocks. Uh, the buying stocks up in these areas are, 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 are at these lofty areas, I, I don't think it's a good recommendation to do. But anyway, let's take a look at our indicators, and I'll show you. So we had our gap down into this area in the NIMO, and we were down 95%, and then we closed back in at the next day. That gave us the buy signal. Now, the, we've rallied so far, so hard, in a short amount of time. Now the NIMO has now given us a sell signal. And obviously, it doesn't always have to happen, but I just wanted you to know that on the NIMO, we are in a sell signal right at this moment. And if I bring something else up, I want to show you uh, NASDAQ record high percentage index. Okay, this is actually a really good index to follow. And as you can see on these spikes, right, this gave this, uh, uh, get, also gave the buy signal. And I showed you the advanced New York advanced decline and, of course, the New York new low um, yesterday. I'm not going to bring that up today. But if you notice that every time we do spike lower and we run up, we always run back down again. See, so as you can see here, we pull back. Here we pull back. Here we pull back. Here we pull back. And the same as in the back here. So um, if pattern repeats itself, I'm looking for at least another pullback um, so then we can buy into stocks. How deep is the pullback? I have no idea. Obviously, no one knows. But I do feel that a pullback is in the cards. I don't think you can just go straight up. Uh, I think it actually would be more healthier for the rally, for a rally to come by the end of the year. I do think the markets will be in trouble in 2013. I'm going to do um, a longer-term analysis in the next couple of weeks and put that out there. For We do have a lot of longer-term um, investors as well. So I like to kind of... Uh, Take care of everybody, day traders, swing traders, long-term investors as well. But I'll be putting that, um, that report out uh, in the next coming weeks or so as we get closer to the end of the year. Now, let's take a look at the Shanghai. And I, I look at it on a, on a consistent basis. I don't put it out in a report as much because really, unless something's happening, nothing is happening here. Uh, this is a little concerning to me. And although they keep saying China's having, um, they're going to have a, um, a soft landing, I it doesn't look that way. At least the market's not telling us that. So this is something that's concerning to me. Um, and again, if China is uh, uh, going into a tailspin and is going to have a hard landing, it's going to affect our commodities and equities as well. So we're going to monitor that. And I still think that there's a decent China play out there probably uh, in the next six to eight weeks, which I'll be uh, uh, obviously letting everybody know about that as well. But um, here's, so here's the SSEC to Ch Shanghai, really not telling us much of anything. Um, then I want to show you the U.S. dollar, and as you know, the U.S. dollar is king. We did bounce off of support ever so slightly. Now, as you know, the larger picture on the weekly chart, we do have that, that um, head and shoulders pattern that obviously has not triggered yet. So that's going to be really the key if we're going to run into a real decent-sized rally, and it all depends on when, that, when the U.S. dollar starts to really fall. Um, that could happen. Now, the dollar could really work both ways with this fiscal cliff issue that we have coming to the year end, um, or can the dollar act as a safe haven? Now, uh, you know, the dollar could get totally destroyed 
based on all of this debt um, and not worry about being that safe haven um, currency that we have, right? Because really, if you're looking at the currency-wise, the dollar is really the only safe currency, uh, safe haven currency there is out there. We have we had the Swiss franc, we had the Japanese yen, and we have the U.S. dollar, right? Well, you could take out the Swiss franc because that's pegged to the euro now, so that's not a safe haven anymore. And now you have the yen, which the yen is just getting totally destroyed, and that's also because of monetary policy that the Bank of Japan is implementing, trying to um, curb that safe haven status that they don't want anymore. So now you have the dollar, and the dollar is the only game in town, so the dollar could act a couple of ways, and that's something that we really need to monitor. It doesn't always have to be inverted to what the markets are doing. Remember that. So it all depends on the shift of sentiment. Um, I think uh, as of right now, the dollar is obviously totally correlated, inversely correlated to what the markets are doing. Um, so if the dollar has strength, the markets and commodities will go lower. And that's still going to stay, stay the same for quite some time. But that could change in 2013, depending on what the fiscal cliff issue is. Uh, it doesn't get resolved by year end. But all of this debt is not good for the dollar as well. But nonetheless, we do have an inverse correlated effect U.S. dollar strength, market weakness. Market strength, dollar weakness. So uh, right now, we're just going to take that as stripe. I just wanted to point that out to you on the uh, currency issue. Now, we are here at support, so we're going to be looking for a little bit of a bounce and see if we could take out these highs. Now, if that happens, we're going to get that pullback that we're looking for. Right now, it hasn't happened. Right now, the dollar is a little bit weaker in the overnight session, but it's, uh, the overnight session has been very, very quiet. Uh, futures up a dollar, dollar and a half right now as I'm recording this. All right, now let's get into the charts. And I, I have also uh, an Apple analysis. I get a lot of emails about Apple again. And it's actually a good, uh, a good stock to analyze on a regular basis because it's so heavily weighted and accused in the S&P 500. Now, just to show you the 10-minute chart of the um, SPYs, inside day, really no change, guys. But you see that pop? This is what I like to look for. You see that little rally at the end of the day? Whether it be short covering or not, it doesn't matter. It's still giving you, giving you a bullish bias that we paid a lot of losses. So if the shorts were really diligently looking to push this market down, um, we'd have a little bit more of a, um, at least a weak close going into it. But we did not. We actually rallied into the close. Um, and like we see, as you can see here, we rallied back in here. So again, a good sign. Not that there's anything um, that, that I would look to run out and start buying stocks up here, I, I wouldn't. Uh, day trading, totally different story, obviously, because uh, we're looking for the day, trading for the day. Now, um, we're at the 14.06 level here, 14.09. I think it, the market's going to get have a little trouble at the 14.25 area, and that's the, this is the cash here, and that's because we're at the 50-day moving average, and we have a lot of congestion up top, so we have a lot of overhead uh, resistance. So this is something that I'm going to be monitoring to see if we're going to take an objective short, and that's more than likely what I'm looking to do. I'd love to get a hard run up. Um, capitulate right up in this area and then start looking for a rollover and fail. And even if we came back down to the 20 or the 200 day in here, the 1390, even the you know 1385 area, that would be a great spot to look to buy to buy stocks going into the year end. So that's what I'm looking for. Um, now, if we take out yesterday's low, which would be 1397 at 1400 area, then I could see some further downside movement into the 1380, 1375 in the S&P. Now, this is the cash I'm talking about. Um, spiders. Let's take a look at spiders. Spiders, I found something interesting here. Uh, we have better volume, obviously, which is a good sign, but we did have an inside day, as you can see from um, from Friday. So Monday, inside day, which is a good. It's consolidation. It's taking a breather. Um, but again, I'd like to see us take a quick run up and then fail again, and then really start to move lower into that you know, 1380 every, which would be 138 and change in the uh, in the spiders. Now, on the 30 minute chart in the spiders, I found an inverted, nice little inverted head and shoulders, a slanted neckline, and uh, we did get a breakout. So that actually validated the inverted head and shoulders. Target comes out to be about five and five dollars and twenty five cents, which would put us right around the five one forty five twenty five area. Now we did validate since we did break out on Friday. Um, however, usually usually tend to roll back down again, kind of make a higher low off of this area before moving higher. So maybe we do get that pullback and we get that maybe a little deeper pullback into the neckline to actually test the neckline and then roll. So that's something I'm going to be monitoring. But again, bullish setup, inverted head and shoulders, S&P, the spiders, 
uh, target area 145.25. Again, I'd like to see a little bit of a pullback here. And you could even, if, if we get a nice little pullback, you could even call this even a, a, maybe a cup and handle if we get back down to this area, maybe to 138.95, 139 area. So again, a bullish setup here in the uh, in the spiders. But, uh, but when we do have this inverted head and shoulders, we'd like to see that thing test, make a higher low off of the neckline, and then move higher. So again, we still could have a nice little bit of a pullback. Diamonds, same thing here, struggling with that 200-day moving average. Inside day, nice crossover on a daily, anemic volume. Volume really stinks here. So I'd like to see us really get back down here, fill that little gap, and then move higher. But again, constructive here. MACD's stack stochastics crossing over. Pretty good. Transports, starting to have some life here, which is a great sign going into the end of the year. Again, seasonal uh, strength is upon us on the uh, transportation sector and, of course, technology as well. As you can see that we did rally in tech and um, uh, and in transports yesterday. So, again, a big move, though. We had five five big days up, so i really like to see this take a little breather, at least for a couple of days, consolidate, and then move higher. Take a look at our Russell. Russell, big move up. And then uh, Russell actually actually was stronger out of all of them, and we could see that without without volume validating that move uh, yesterday. So we did break above the 200. Again, I think the market came way too far too fast, and I am looking for a pullback in the Russell as well. Maybe back to that 79, 78 area, and then we we would reevaluate it. We are coming across this um, this uptrend line here, guys. Too. So this uptrend line is going to give us resistance. We have actually confluence area of resistance here with a 50. Approaching us, we have this up longer uh, term uptrend line and this horizontal line here coming in around 80, 81. So we're going to come approach some some resistance. And also, as you can see here, we've been up for six days: one, two, three, four, five, six full days, low volume. Yesterday we did have that big push up. Um, so definitely do for a breather in your IWMs and a Russell. Now let's take a look at Apple, and here's what. We had that uh, we had that daily chart of that head and shoulders pattern on the daily and uh, rallied uh, actually sold off down to that 588 hit our target and then we actually continued lower. Now this is what I'm showing on a weekly chart here. What I'm seeing I'm seeing a bigger head and shoulders pattern on the weekly chart. Now 600 on the on the uh, daily chart is going to come into some uh, heavy resistance. Now obviously we're coming into um, Christmas time, everybody loves the uh, Apple products, so that's why it's getting a boost. I think Apple's longer term going to be in trouble. Um, that's just me, as I'm seeing in the charts. has nothing to do personally, it's just what I'm looking for. Now, um, this is that left shoulder. Here's that right shoulder. Now, again, I have question marks because it's not completed. Now, if we rally, maybe we rally into that 600, 620 area, create that lower right shoulder um, right maybe somewhere in here and then start to fail and start to come back down again we have this long-term trend line that we held we also have another trend line that I don't have here because I haven't opened a chart that's actually back testing this trend line as well and as you can see here on our indicators we had a divergent high in place right we had our MACD's very powerful move up right up in this area here back in April and we sold off and then we had that other push higher which is that divergent high that we're looking for. And that's what I was saying, that Apple at 700, 690, um, we look to, to fail. And that's where I got that um, divergent high from. I just wanted to show everybody because a lot of people ask me, how'd you, how'd you find that? And that's on the weekly chart here. And as you can see, uh, we are still on a weekly chart, a little bit oversold here. We still haven't broken back up again. But again, guys, Apple here, you see our MACD hasn't even moved. It's wide open, and that's telling me that momentum is definitely waning on this move up. So I think at 600, um, you're going to have 600. Let's call it 600 to 620, probably going to max out on this move up. And let me show you uh, what I mean. Here's the Apple Daily. We had that left that head, left shoulder, right shoulder. 588 was that move right up in this area, and um, we actually hit that and moved even lower. Now, as you can see here, we had a big move up. So my guess... 620, that'll be the 50-day moving average at the very least, um, ma excuse me, max of uh, 620, and then we would need to reevaluate what the charts are saying and re re really read the um, volume and our, and our indicators here. So 600 to 620, if you're still long or you're looking to get long, um, I don't think I'd be looking to get long right up in this area here. Big, big move, guys. Um, so just use a little word of caution. I would tighten up the stops here. Uh, a good, like I said, another good maybe 20 points in Apple that you can get that in a day. 
All right, so just keep an eye on that. Um, 600, 620, again, uh, big area resistance, uh, and then we need to reevaluate. Q, same thing. Uh, recaptured its 20-day. Uh, really nice little volume here on Friday, again, with the help of Facebook and, of course, Apple. And uh, right up in this area here, 66, 65 is at 50. Still having trouble with the 200-day moving average. Big head, overhead supplies you can see here in our volume profiles. Little thin zone area, so if we do break that 200, we could easily test that 50-day moving average. All right, guys, that's it. A uh, little long-winded, sorry about that, but I want to get that Apple point across. Have a great day, and we'll speak to you tomorrow. Take care.